When asked how many paths reach enlightenment, the monk kicked a heap of sand. Count, he said, and then find more grains. Flavor text of Mystic Monastery. On the war-torn plain of Tarkir, five clans compete for territory and dominance of the world, with each of these clans embodying a separate aspect of the long-extinct dragons. Representing the eye and personifying the cunning of these ancient dragons, the Jaskai clan is one that seeks constant improvement and further enlightenment from within their mountain monasteries. To the people that follow the Jeskai way, the pillars of discipline, enlightenment, industriousness, and tradition guide nearly every aspect of their lives. To the Jeskai, a day spent without training is a day that they consider wasted. The people of this clan dedicate several hours each day to meditative exercise. This meditation keeps the body physically fit and is designed to slow down the natural aging process. As a result, the average member of the Jeskai clan will have a lifespan nearly double that of people found elsewhere on Tarkir. This long life is not spent solely on meditation, however, as the Jeskai way has many facets that its people pursue. Every member of the clan, whether they be farmer or monk, artisan or wandering warrior, possesses a weapon of choice. The Jeskai will train with this chosen weapon throughout their long life, perfecting its use. Through their mastery of both the body and a chosen weapon, the Jeskai monks become martial artists of the highest caliber, dangerous to any who would threaten them. It should be noted that even without a weapon, Jeskai monks are a dangerous foe. The clan possesses several different forms of martial arts which they can utilize to defend themselves and defeat their enemies. In addition to training with their body and weapons, mystics of the order pursue mastery over the sacred elemental forces they call fires. Totaling five in all, each corresponds to a color of magic. The Jeskai believe in the white soul fire, the blue mist fire, the black death fire, the red blood fire, and the green vital fire. Though the Jeskai are forbidden to meddle in black magic, and believe green magic should not be tamed. The soul fire, mist fire, and blood fire magics are all pursued by the clan. The Jeskai use magic not primarily for combat, instead utilizing the unpredictable nature of their colors to manipulate elements, deflect and redirect attacks, and alter the very flow of time. Rather than torrents of power, the Jeskai use their magic to gain an advantage and undermine their enemies whenever possible. Those who have mastered the magic of the three fires are able to move beyond the limitations of color and access the sixth flame, the colorless ghost fire, which was taught to the Jeskai long ago by the spirit dragon Ugin. Knowledge of this ghost fire is rare, and only a handful of individuals throughout Tarkir's history have managed to wield it. Despite their mountain monasteries secluding them from the outside world, the Jeskai are not opposed to outsiders joining the clan. Orphans are regularly adopted, and the monks are willing to welcome anyone so long as they show adherence to the way. Despite their presence in the clan being common, the Jeskai Efreet always start as outsiders to the clan, hailing from the mysterious mountain range known as Kadat. These Afrit are naturally a destructive race and seek out the Jeskai way to learn the discipline necessary to better themselves, as do many outsiders who join the ranks of the monks. The initiates will train for years before taking the harrowing trials necessary to become seen as a full-fledged member of the clan. As they grow and learn, the students will over time be pulled into one of three possible paths of life known as the ways. To those who take up the way of the artisan, their lives become one of studious labor and expertise. Weapons, great structures, and fantastic pieces of art are all constructed by the artisans of the Jeskai. Those who pursue this path become master craftsmen that not only fill the clan's reserves of weapons, but also bring in funding through trade. The Way of the Mystic 
is taken by students who either themselves wish to become teachers to the next generation of young monks, or those who desire to train themselves further in the mystic or martial arts of the Jeskai Way. These monks seek perfection and enlightenment, often far removed from the rest of the world. Finally, there is the Way of the Wandering Warrior, members of the Jeskai who will spend most of their time traveling the wilderness between strongholds. These monks will serve as a sort of police force for the clan, serving as guardians or helping to mediate disputes. These wandering warriors are often the first kind of Jeskai monks that outsiders will encounter, and are often the clan's first defense against invaders. Wandering warriors are adept at many of the clan's most obscure arts, such as using unconventional weapons or conjuring pearls for battle. The Jeskai do not typically live in cities or villages. Instead, their primary residence is their mountain strongholds, great fortress monasteries that defend their people and isolate them from the changing world beyond their territory. The Jeskai have four major strongholds, in addition to many minor ones. The Deerger Stronghold is the most accessible of the major strongholds. Located on an island in the center of a lake, this stronghold is reached through a series of bridges connected by rock and dragon bones. The Deerger Stronghold is situated near a major caravan route known as the Salt Road, where the Jeskai trade with each other and outsiders, such as Abzan merchants. This stronghold is best known to produce fierce martial artists known as Bloodfire Warriors. The Cori Mountain Stronghold is located within a long dead volcanic crater and is surrounded by an immense dragon skeleton. Rumors persist that the soul of an ancient dragon is held deep underneath this stronghold. The Riverwheel Stronghold is built into the side of a sheer cliff with a majestic waterfall flowing through the fortress itself. Monks from this stronghold practice a flowing martial art and use various flexible weapons, such as whips and weaponized cloth. Finally, there is the Sage Eye Stronghold, the primary fortress of the clan and the seat of power for their Khan, Narset. While each of the strongholds will follow their own martial arts school, traditions, and leader, it is ultimately Narset who guides the Jeskai, and under her rule, the clan has enjoyed nearly a decade of prosperity and peace. The Jeskai Way appears in the first two sets of the Khans of Tarkir block, and are the faction that represent the color wedge of white, blue, and red. In both sets, the clan was represented by the new mechanic prowess, which increased the power of its creatures with each non-creature spell cast in a turn. This mechanic helped to highlight the clan's focus on keeping their opponents on their toes. At any time, a new spell could come around and increase the strength of these monks. Only two legendary creatures exist representing the Jeskai Way, Narset, Enlightened Master, and Elsha of the Infinite. With it being unlikely that we'll see the clan again, it's equally unlikely that we'll see new legendary creatures from the Jeskai. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please consider leaving a like or sharing this video with your friends. If you subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button, you'll be notified whenever I upload new videos. If there's a topic you'd like me to discuss, feel free to let me know in the comments section below. Finally, if you follow me on Twitter, you'll have an early idea of what my next video will be. Thank you again, and have a good day.
Alright, if you watched this video up to the end, then you deserve to know. There are monks in this clan that ride giant mantises into battle. These mantises are not by any means trained, can and will eat the riders, and the monks do it regardless. Honestly, it's such an insane power move. Could you imagine rolling up on Jeskai territory and one of these guys rolls over the mountaintop towards you only for the mount to pick up the rider and bite off their head? What do you even do in that situation? I think I'd cry!